So I'll take you on just a little tiny journey of, uh, sort of my little journey of exploration and uh, some of the things that I've been very fortunate to witness just in my own career. A lot of people ask me, where did I get interested in science? And I had to think about that because I've always been, ever since I was a kid, I was interested in science. And I had to trace it back to one book that my mother brought home from the grocery store one day. This isn't it, but it was like this. It was a, I wish I had this book. Because I didn't realize how much it affected me. But it was called The Solar System. Now you gotta bear in mind, before I started dyeing my hair gray, uh, I was a little kid. And when I was a little kid, the entire space program had not happened yet. I remember Sputnik. I, I was very small, but I can remember Sputnik, the first satellite. And so all of the space program has happened within my lifetime, which is amazing to think about. And I'm not that old. So when I was a kid, we hadn't been to space yet, so it was only artists who could tell us what space looked like. Because all they had were telescopes. And the center fold of this book that I had had a picture of Saturn as seen from one of its moons, called Minus. And I read the caption, and it did not say the lamp has reached the end of the moon. <laughs> Isn't that kind of scary? It's just going to last. <laughs> uh, <coughs> the picture was like this. It didn't have kids in it. It just had this foreground moon, and then this big, giant planet with rings going around it. And the caption that was underneath this picture, I still remember it today, it said, from this moon, Saturn would fill three quarters of your sky. Three quarters of your sky. Hmm. I went outside and looked at our moon. It happened to be up there. Have you ever measured our moon? You know what it is? Our moon is the size of an aspirin held at arm's length. Our moon is that big. It's tiny. So I'm looking at this little tiny thing in the sky and thinking, well, that's our moon. Saturn would be this holy shit. Cow, look at that. Look at, that would be amazing. There's a place. There is a place I could go. A real place that I could go, and there would be this big brown planet in my sky. That would be spectacular. And then I read about Saturn, and it said, Saturn's not like the Earth. It's made of gas. In fact, it's really light. It's lighter than water. If you could find an ocean large enough, Saturn would float. Well, that just blew me away. I went running downstairs with this book in my hand. I said, Mom, there's a planet that floats. There's a planet that floats. Said, yeah, yeah, great. Go, go away. Stop bothering me. <laughs> but it struck me that there are places in this universe that are just as real as this one, but very, very different. And it has been my exquisite pleasure as a journalist to actually witness the exploration of some of the nearby worlds in our solar system. Because as I grew up, we sent rockets, we sent people, and then we started sending robots out to the planet. Then I got a job in the Ontario Science Center, and don't laugh at this picture, because one day you will have a picture of yourself in your teens and early 20s, in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> I used to be able to grab my hair from behind, actually. Well, I got a job in the Ontario Science Center, but while I was working there, NASA started sending robots to the planet. And uh, they sent them, so far we've been to all the planets except Pluto, and there's one on the way there now. And these robots, uh, this one in particular called Voyager, it did a grand tour of our solar system. It went to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It took 12 years to do that. I was actually at the launch. I watched it disappear from Cape Canaveral. I drove my motorcycle to Cape Canaveral to watch Voyager get launched. And then, three years later, I went to California to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory where they control them and watched the pictures come in from these robots. And it is amazing to see something humans have never seen before. Because everyone's the same. The scientists, the journalists, the public who are there. We look at these places and we go, wow, look at that. We're seeing things. This is pure exploration, going someplace for the first time. You only do that once. And what were the stars of these shows were not the planets themselves. Because we kind of knew what Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune were like. But it was their moons. Their moons. They have hundreds of them. And one of them that we managed to get, uh, oh, uh, here's, here's an example of one of the things we saw. This is a picture of Saturn that you cannot see from the Earth because we're around the side of it. The spacecraft has already passed Saturn and it's looking back. And you can see the shadow of the planet on the rings. 
We don't get that from Earth. We always see Saturn as full because we're way over here somewhere. And there's the shadow of the rings on the planet itself up here. So the shadow of the rings on the planet, the shadow of the planet on the rings. A perspective you can't see from here. But uh, there's my little moon. There's my little moon right there, minus, really close to the rings. And this is the perspective that was shown in that artist drawing when I was a kid. And we even got a close-up picture of it. We didn't land on it. It kind of looks like the Death Star in the uh, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Huge crater. These moons are made of ice. They're not like our moon at all. They're small, they're made of ice. So when they get hit, they get, it's like a splash that happens on them. You get these enormous craters. But there, I finally got to see the place that I dreamed about going to when I was a little kid. What a, what a wonderful privilege to have science give that to me. It was, it was really terrific.